Hello, everybody. Thank you for inviting me to this amazing conference. Um, I'm here to present a little case study that I'm working on. Uh, this case study is about a journal called the Muslims in the Soviet East. Um, so this uh, journal was established in 1969 by Sadum, uh, the spiritual administration of the Muslims of Central Asia and Kazakhstan. And uh, it's an interesting example of several issues that I would like to talk about. Uh, first of all, transnational mobility. Uh, so this journal was uh, aimed at foreign audiences. Uh, it was, um, the main mission was to uh, inform people abroad about the life of Muslims in the Soviet Union, to bring down this sort of iron curtain and um, to describe, uh, <laughs> thank you, um, and to describe uh, what they were doing there. Um, and uh, therefore, this journal consisted of uh, imagery and representation of uh, mobility, uh, which uh, the Soviet Muslims were capable of. Uh, the second issue is the role of media as an actor of cultural interaction. So obviously this journal was supposed to be distributed abroad. Um, it was uh, sent to Arab countries, at least I am concentrating on the Arabic version of this journal uh, that was distributed through Russian cultural centers uh, in several Arab countries. And then um, the other interesting aspect is periphery to periphery relations. Uh, of course, Central Asia was considered to be the periphery of the Soviet Union, at least it's obvious from the name of the journal, since uh, it describes Central Asia as Soviet East and not Soviet Center. Uh, and then this journal was supposed to uh, bring together people from the Soviet periphery to the um, periphery of the world, I guess, because uh, from the, at least from the Eurocentric point of view, Arab countries are supposed to be periphery. But at the same time, um, I'm thinking about reconsidering this um, relationship as south-to-south -south relationship, because obviously Central Asia is the southern region, and Arab countries are a part of the global south, and this is also an interesting topic, um, not much worked on. Um, and the fact that uh, these relations circumvent the typical uh, centers of power in particular in the Soviet Union, this uh, journal was uh, first published in Arabic and Uzbek, and then later in French and English, but not in Russian. And it was not distributed in Moscow, uh, which is interesting. Um, it meant that um, this journal was aimed at the foreign audiences and domestic audience, uh, meaning audience in Uzbekistan, I guess, uh, but not the Russian audience. Um, Yes, so um, yeah, so the imagery that this journal is using um, is representative of the Soviet cultural diplomacy at the time. Um, a little bit of context. Um, in the first decades of the Soviet power, obviously, they had these big anti-religious campaigns, and uh, Islam, as other religions, was not uh, really allowed to uh, be expressed, especially in political sphere. Uh, but that changed during the Second World War, because uh, the Soviets decided to use religion as a factor in cultural diplomacy and started looking for allies uh, using Islam as uh, sort of this means of establishing cultural diplomatic relations. And so that's where uh, this spiritual administration that I'm talking about uh, came into picture. They, they convinced Soviets to be more open towards other Islamic countries and to not be afraid, I guess, to use Islam in cultural diplomacy. And so the cultural exchange began. Uh, many delegations came from the Arab countries and other Muslim countries to this region. They were shown the uh, Central Asian uh, places of worship. Uh, this is the examples of delegations, uh, which is interesting and also a bit funny since the delegations that usually came to the Soviet Union from the Arab countries were not Muslim delegations. They're mostly communists, uh, sort of 
members of the Arab communist parties. So I'm not sure if they were really interested in going to these uh, places, but um, I guess it was just presumed that they would want to go there and to see something that would remind them of imagery that they see at home. Um, and the other important thing about transnational mobility is that uh, the spiritual administration bargained with the Soviet authorities uh, to um, open uh, the Hajj for the Soviet Muslims. Uh, Soviet Muslims became, in that regard, more privileged than the other c categories of Soviet uh, citizens because they could actually leave the Soviet Union and go to, on this religious pilgrimage to Saudi Arabia and to visit Mecca and Medina. And uh, the journal also obviously reflected that. And uh, here, for example, one of um, sheikhs from the Central Asia uh, getting an audience with uh, the Saudi King Faisal. Um, and of course, uh, the journal um, con contained uh, the imagery that should have been familiar to the Muslim uh, audiences, uh, for example, Muslim conferences where the Muslim clerics were addressing their audience in Central Asian cities, uh, for example, in Tashkent. Uh, and usually, uh, all those um, events and most of the Soviet cultural diplomacy uh, in that region was um, made by this very famous family, family of Baba Hans, on which I'm also concentrating in my uh, research. They were very active in establishing relations with um, Muslim uh, people, Muslim audiences abroad. They uh, established this journal. They were going in delegations to Cairo, to Jeddah, uh, to talk to people and to tell them we Central Asians are open for this um, exchange. And um, so I've been struggling to find a methodology to describe this phenomenon that I uncovered. For now, I am um, using the imagined world concept, uh, which is connected to imagined community, I guess, uh, from Benedict Anderson, uh, because uh, this journal, as I understood it, was trying to uh, present Central Asians as a part of imagined world of Ummah, which is this, this global Muslim community. Uh, but at the same time, obviously, they um, had to uh, do it under the influence of uh, Soviet understanding of how Muslims were supposed to live and how they were supposed to um, live under the communist rule specifically. So that's where it comes to interesting contradiction because... Um, Obviously, communism is an international ideology, but at the same time, in the Arab world, as well as in other parts of the world, um, there's been an anti-imperialist struggle, and it usually was executed by nationalist movements. Uh, so how to coincide these two um, ideologies, these two agendas, uh, the communist ideology and the nationalist anti-imperialist ideology? Um, they did it through presenting Central Asia as an example for uh, solving this kind of issue. They, at least the Soviet authorities said that uh, you can have um, communism as the leading ideology in the political sphere, and then you have ethnic, religious, nationalist, uh, whatever, uh, divisions in the private sphere. <laughs> so that was the... Um, uh, division that was uh, promoted with this um, journal where there was no mentioning of Islam as a political agenda, as a sort of um, a model for building a political system, but almost all the materials were about Islam as um, sort of domestic issue, as um, uh, a model for people's behavior inside of their homes, or maybe in public places, but not in the political sphere. And uh, this was obviously not uh, an ideal solution to the problem. It caused a lot of uh, contradictions in the imagery that was used by the journal. And uh, the uh, most, most, probably the brightest example of that is the uh, representation of Muslim women uh, in the journal. 
So most of women in um, in the Muslim South, in the Soviet East, um, were not exactly presented as Muslim women. They don't wear hijab. They don't wear other sort of signs by which you can say that it's a Muslim woman. Uh, because, and because of that, there was interesting imagery juxtaposed basically on the same page of the journal where you can see a Muslim cleric reading a book. And then on the other page, there is a woman that is not supposedly Muslim woman. On the contrary, she's working on a factory. She is a representative of sort of a Soviet model of an emancipation woman who goes to work and uh, earns money and doesn't really need a man and all of that. So this was an interesting contradiction that I found. And um, another example of how women were presented in the journal is as a Communist Party functionary. So for example, in this picture, a woman awards a medal to a Muslim cleric. Um, so I, I don't know how the Muslim audiences abroad uh, reacted to those pictures, but it was an interesting contradiction that um, obviously was not in the vein of a traditional representation of Muslims in the media. And um, another aspect uh, that, uh, that was very much present in the journal and also representative of how the Soviets um, approached this issue was that uh, they tried to use Islam as a model for technological progress. So um, in the Central Asia, they had um, scholars in the medieval times, uh, for example, Khwarezmi or Alishir Nawai, who contributed to mathematics, to algebra, uh, but they had nothing to do, obviously, with the Soviet Central Asia. However, uh, this journal uh, made a big attempt at connecting what those scholars did and how they uh, contributed to the technological progress um, to con and they tried to connect it with what's happening in the Soviet republics at the time, which is technological development, building of factories, building of subways. And um, basically they're trying to build this imagined world of Muslim community, not only in space, I mean in Central Asia as a part of um, other parts of the world uh, with Muslim population, but also in time. Uh, so it comes back into this Middle Ages era, where Muslim scholars were contributing to technological progress, uh, is going to the present, where we are building all these factories, and then obviously in communist tradition, it goes to the to the future. So, the future where uh, the Muslim world would be uh, progressive and technologically advanced. Um, yeah. So. This is the kind of idea that I'm trying to describe on the, using the example of um, this journal. Thank you very much for your attention.